Hello, my name is Clara Caldeira, and I'm presenting the paper, A State-Based Medication Routine Framework. This work is co-authored with Palabi Bomek, Priya Komarlingen, and Katie Seek. In this research, we looked at medication management and the practices that sustain or possibly limit successful adherence. According to the WHO, improving adherence will lead to very substantial benefits to health outcomes on a population level. In the US alone, about half of the population takes prescription medications, and non-adherence or missing medications is a cause for 30% of hospital admissions and over 100,000 preventable deaths per year. Research on interventions and tools to support adherence have shown mixed results. When there has been improvement, it is quite limited, and the most successful interventions are very costly and difficult to scale, involving several elements such as patient education and one-on-one -on -one counseling. ATI researchers have argued for designing to support medication management strategies that work, the main one being medication routines. However, we also know that routine disruptions are a main cause for forgetfulness, so we can't really rely on them. So in this project, we are looking to understand people's lived experiences with medication management and routine disruptions. So we conducted an interview study with 22 participants. The criteria to participate were taking prescribed medication at least once per day and forgetting to take the medications at least twice per month on average. Other than that, the participants were quite diverse. They Ages ranged from mid-20s to mid-70s. Um, their health status and medications were pretty diverse as well. And they came from a wide range of socioeconomic status. In the interviews, we discussed their medication management strategies and the reasons or situations that led them to forget to take their medications. Before going over the findings, I want to talk about medication routines. Medication routine consists of linking the act of taking medications with a habit that typically occurs every day. For example, taking medications with breakfast, before bedtime, and so on. These habits can occur at a specific location and time, although they can vary for day to day. So having breakfast in the kitchen between 7.30 and 8 in the morning. Um, the routines are a pretty common strategy, and most of the participants had them. Um, and they described how the activity associated with the routine itself is a reminder for taking medication. So, for example, breakfast might include making coffee, preparing an omelet, and taking the medications. We also observed that visual cues were common strategies used alongside the medication routines. And people place their medications somewhere that's visible when they're doing that activity. For example, um, in the same cabinet as the box of cereal or next to the coffee grounds. So let's look at an example of what this looks like. Here we have uh, the daily activities of a person from waking up in the morning to going to bed at night. In the second row here, we have commuting to and from work. And in the upper right corner um, is having breakfast in the morning. This is the habit that's linked with taking medications. This is what the pill bottle icon is indicating. The person will remember to take their medications most of the time because they're following this routine and they are pretty used to it. However, before they get to that point, there is a period of adjustment. So say this person gets prescribed a new medication. So they decide to take it in the office, but until the routine is established, they will be more likely to forget in comparison with taking the morning medication. And they might use additional strategies to remember, such as a time reminder. The kind of alarm serves as a backup if they don't remember to take the medication without it. In the case of the morning medication, where there is an established routine already, the reminder is not really needed. It's not helpful either. The person will remember to take it most of the time. And if they don't, there is not a fixed time of the day when they have breakfast. So the alarm might ring when they're doing something else before or after breakfast, such as taking a shower. Most of the time when they do forget a medication, it's because there has been a disruption in their routine. For example, instead of having breakfast at home, as shown here in the top right, they do something different. So for instance, maybe they have breakfast with friends at a coffee shop. In this case, the routine that they rely on does not occur as usual. The activity of having breakfast is different enough from what happens most days that it does not really work as a reminder. 
Time reminders also do not really work in this case. When the routine is disrupted, the person often is not home or they don't have the medications with them or they're just in a hurry. So they're likely to forget to take their medication. Here we have a person who normally has a routine, but it gets disrupted every once in a while. And this was the most common situation that led to forgetting about, among the participants. But we also found that sometimes people are not able to establish a long-term routine at all. So they had to manage their medications in the long term without a routine. And this is kind of what it looked like. The lack of medication routine was usually due to having daily habits that changed a lot from day to day. So they couldn't really stick to a routine long enough for it to become part of their daily habits. And the other strategies for remembering also did not work well. There was not a specific place for them to keep the medications that would work as a visual cue, and there was no ideal time in the day for a time-based reminder. People tried to use them, but the reminder would ring while they were in a meeting or driving and so on. This is the last of four contexts or states that influence medication management. We organize them in this framework in two dimensions, routine and non-routine, and short-term and long-term. So here, the wellness state is routine long-term. We call it the state because it's kind of the ideal. People tend to remember their medications and they have multiple successful strategies. For the new task state, they tended to use timed reminders, but there were no successful strategies for either of those non-routine states. The disruption state was the most common cause for forgetting among the participants, since most of them were normally in the wellness state. However, people in the erratic state consistently face the most challenges, forgetting to take their medications the most often. This state was usually caused by the person's occupation, such as not having the same, same work hours every day. For example, this can be the case of for college students, gig workers, freelancers, or people who have one or more part-time jobs. So one of our conclusions is that there is a need for designing technologies that help people to manage their medications in both of these non-routine states. But first, we need to be able to detect when people are in these states so that we know when they need additional assistance with remembering. We also need to be able to determine when is the right time and place to provide a reminder. The person needs to be able to take their medication, so it should be nearby, and they should not be too busy doing something else. It could be quite difficult to do all of that with a single device. So instead, we can think about leveraging context awareness and ubiquitous technologies to provide just-in-time reminders. We go into a lot more detail in the paper, so I invite you to read it, and I'm happy to answer any questions by email or other channels. I'll finish by thanking my co-authors and the NSF and CI Fellows Program for supporting this work. Thank you also for watching.